You put your spell cards in, you take your monster cards out, you put your trap cards in and you flip them all about. You do the mokey mokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Mm -hmm, the mokey mokey. Hey! What up, yo? It's me, Lil Karibo here, with yet another episode of Lil Karibo Watches the Yu Gi Oh! GX, the show where I subject myself to copious amounts of Jade and Yuki and live to tell the tale. Somehow. And if you've not watched this show before, the idea is that I watch an episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX and then give my impressions of it. It's usually like, Ooh, I'm an episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, look at me! Uh. That's my impression of it. Nah, I just tell you what happened. And this is the 23rd episode thereof, and if you're trying to watch along with me, you can watch Yu-Gi-Oh! GX legally at Hulu.com. I almost missed my finger, I think I did. Uh, you can watch it at Yu-Gi-Oh!.com. You can watch it on DVD, obviously. There's, there's many options by which to, uh, experience the show, and it is an experience. Especially this episode, I've got to say. This episode, I mean, the show is weird. The show is wacky. It's got talking monkeys and a school that's all about card games, but I was not prepared for the content of episode 23 of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX entitled The Little Balowski, which keen observers might recognize is a subtle allusion to the Coen Brothers classic the Big Lebowski. A film that flopped massively at the box office and only gained a huge following after the fact when people watched this episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX and tried to watch the Big Lebowski movie to understand what the f they'd just seen. It didn't help. But it is a great comedy film. One of the best. Probably my favorite comedy film of all time. In fact, if you want to watch something that is guaranteed to make you laugh more than any of my videos, please go watch The Big Lebowski right now. We'll all wait. All right, when they've gone, let's just do the review without them, okay? So faster than you can find a stranger in the Alps, let's jump right into The Little Balowski. And the episode starts off in the woodsy forest of uh, Dual Academy Island, where Crowler is fretting like nuts about the fact that Jaden is gonna represent the Dual Academy at the school duel. Yes, he doesn't want a little lout like Jaden representing them. He'd much rather have a guy like Bastion, a man who once covered his entire body with equations and believes that E equals M C squared is actually pronounced E equals mm C squared. Crowler says to himself that he's gonna do whatever it takes to stop Jaden from representing. And we see him entering a little fenced off area, uh, miles away from the Duel Academy itself. And we find very quickly that this is where they keep those bloody chickens where we got the Egg Witch from. And I know what you're thinking, why do they keep those chickens so bloody far away from Duel Academy? Well, it's because Chumley sometimes gets up in the middle of the night, walks outside and finds the nearest live animal and stuffs it in his mouth. They've lost too many chickens that way. Pharaoh the cat's life has been endangered multiple times. Rah, I saw my nine lives flash before my sexy eyes. I am a cat. Rah, rah. Crowler, having learned nothing from his many playthroughs of the Legend of Zelda video game series, infuriates the chickens. <laughs> Okay, stop making so many chicken ponds. It's just making them angrier. Crowler attempts to escape from the deadly army of chickens by opening a secret hatch that leads underground. I'm getting serious lost vibes from this show. It turns out that 4, 8, 15, 16, 23, 42 is how many turns it takes to get through a card game in this show. Crowler slips down the hatch and falls for quite some time before he lands at the bottom, and then he chucks one of the chickens off him into the fucking wall. And as he's fighting off the chickens, we learn that the writer of the Egg Witch episode had a bunch of egg-related puns left over that they didn't use. The yolk's over! <laughs> you belong in a bucket! It's just like they say. You can't make an omelette without breaking a few eggs. Hey, Crowler, can I offer you a nice egg in this trying time? Crowler then puts on a massive pink sort of spacesuit thing with a car chassis on the front, a Mysterio-style bubble head, and uh, Cyclops' his visor for some reason. It looks like Marvel threw up on him. And he gets on this walkway that extends out to this giant yellow dome that has massive pipes feeding into it. And he says what's lurking inside this containment unit is sure to do the trick. I don't know what's inside there, but knowing this show, it probably has a fantastic ass. Crowler swipes his keycard on the door and it opens, releasing a massive rush of air and fumes. And then Crowler 
Crowler says... You there, Belowski? It's your old friend, Dr. Crowler! So there's missing students and you're keeping one of them locked inside a strange science experiment dome thing. It's a good thing that super reporter Gerard from the last episode gave up on exposing the school, because otherwise they couldn't get away with stuff like that. But no, yeah, he's definitely out there trying to find evidence of the missing students. He's definitely out there doing important things. Thanks, Gerard. Speaking of important things, the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX opening theme! A theme song so good that it's likely to get Yu-Gi-Oh! unironically inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Mark my words, it's gonna happen. We then cut to Jaden who is going through his deck and trying to figure out what cards to get rid of. Alexis, Chumley, Cyrus and Bastion try to insist that Jaden use one of their cards. Um. You know my water dragon would be a fine addition to your deck for the school duel. That water dragon's a total wash out. You need something strong like A12 Cyber. How about Death Koala? You can use my power bond if you need. Yeah, let's ignore completely the fact that most of those cards wouldn't work with Jaden's deck. Are you guys paying any attention in class? Jaden has slept through most of this show and even he knows better than you guys. I'm very disappointed in you, Bastion. Not for this specifically, just in general. Jaden complains and says that he's already feeling under a lot of pressure already. And he says that he knows people are counting on him, but all he can do is duel his best. So Bastion ums. You're absolutely right. Dueling isn't about trophies. It's about being the best you can. And the best needs the power of my water dragon card. Guys, he already beat all your cards with his own sh deck. Why would he need them? Stop ruining everything! We cards! Jaden flips out and says that he needs to be alone if he's going to arrange his deck. And Jaden legs it, closely followed by the others, whereupon he manages to escape them. At which point Bastion calls out, I want to help you be alone! You know, if anybody could do that, it would be Bastion. You can't really? be alone all by yourself! You know, Alexis has shown more investment in finding Jaden than she has ever shown in finding her missing brother. Thanks, Gerard. And then Jaden sprints up several flights of stairs to get as far away from his close friends as possible. Truly in the spirit of Yu-Gi-Oh. Remember when Yugi was like, F*** off guys, let me do my card game things. As he's running, Jaden says, No one's ever this helpful when I'm doing my laundry. Dude, you wear the same clothes every single f***ing day. Jaden finally emerges on one of the outer sections of Duel Academy, where he falls down and we get this cracking shot of his ass. And we see a young student is also there, lying on the ground and staring at the sky. Jaden says that he came up here to get some peace and quiet. What's this little guy doing? Here. And little guy says that he came up here to duel Jaden. Because of course he's got precognition and knew that he was gonna be there at some point. Because that's Jaden's like number one hangout spot, right? We've seen him there all the time. You know, on the outer rim of the Duel Academy building. Always there. Jaden asks, Who are you? Just a dude with a deck. Mate, it's Yu-Gi-Oh. You're gonna have to be way more specific than that. You ever notice how clouds look like dual monsters if you look really close? Yeah, they look like Cloudian monsters. Duh. Winged Karibo emerges from Jaden's deck and dances very happily at the sight of Belowski. Nice Karibo. I hear they like being scratched behind the wings. Yeah, that's actually an urban legend about Karibos. We find that very culturally offensive. You can see him? Of course I can, and hear him too, though my Karibo Ease is a little rusty. Well, you better brush up on it, mate, because in a few years, Karibo Ease is going to be one of the dominant languages that the planet uses. You won't be able to get through a single day without having to use a few do the las. Get with the times, Belowski. I should mention that Belowski is this wee little guy who's got lidded eyes and is sort of like a kawaii desu guy. But of course, the uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX writing team decided that we wouldn't understand a guy who was just this little cute man, so he's got to sound like a total stoner, which ironically is very representative of most of the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX fanbase. Bolowski challenges Jaden. Anyhow, let's duel. Again with the dueling. You know, that would actually be a really good alternate subtitle for this spin-off. Yu-Gi-Oh! Again with the dueling? Red, blue, yellow, who cares? Those are just symbols the man uses to try to propagate social division. Oh, sh**. Belowski is woke AF. It's all a conspiracy of the political industrial complex to permeate the so-called free market. Sure, whatevs. 
Let's just throw down! Jaden's obviously one of those guys who goes on YouTube and replies to Yu-Gi-Oh videos saying so sick of all the politics in card games these days. Jaden's friends finally locate him and Jaden explains to them that he's about to duel Balowski, upon which we get the poshest split screen of all time. He's gonna be my opponent. A duel? Up on top of a nearby pillar, we see Crowler hiding from them still wearing the garish spacesuit and he says to himself, Oh, Jaden, once Belowski uses his special skills, he won't be able to compete in the school duel or anywhere else ever again. Oh, sh are his special skills the ability to break people's hands with a mallet? That'll be messed up. All right, Jaden, let's duel. Hold out your hands. Okay, I can't see what would possibly go. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get my game on anymore. You'd end every duel with, that's game, ow. Crowler cracks a hilarious joke that implies he might be a homosexual. Ah. Good thing I pulled my protective armor out of the closet. Which is kind of absurd because we saw it earlier and it wasn't in a closet, it was hung up on a wall. So the joke falls apart for various reasons. Jaden commands Balowski to get his game on, and Balowski has possibly the greatest comeback of the entire series. Get your game on! Yeah, man, whatever. And then Balowski makes his first move. First, I'm gonna summon Moki Moki in defense, Modi Modi. The what in what? Balowski summons his first monster, Moki Moki. Ah? Uh? Not you. Uh ah. -oh in defense mode, and Moki Moki looks like a weird angelic block of tofu with a question mark sticking out of its head. And of course, Jaden's friends are immediately enamored with it. Hearts come out of their heads and everything. Bastion's hearts being covered with equations, of course. Now it's Jaden's turn. My turn then. Ha! And what a turn it'll be. All right, everyone, let's hunker down. It's gonna be an amazing turn, apparently. Jaden starts by summoning Elemental Hero Sparkman in attack mode, and then he uses polymerization to fuse Elemental Hero Bastina with Elemental Hero Avion to summon Elemental Hero Flan Wingman. Okay, admittedly, the fantastic butt ratio in that turn was quite amazing. Sparkman attacks Moki Moki, doing a flip through the air, and I'm just gonna single out that particular frame of his attack for no particular reason. But Jaden's attack doesn't phase Balowski. I've got a trap card. It's called Human Wave Tactics. Wrap your mind around this. At the end of each turn, I can summon a monster that's the same level as the one that's been destroyed. Yeah, that's some real mind-bending stuff there. They have to be level two or below, but it's about the balance, man, the yin and the yang. Mate, you've been sealed inside a dome by yourself for most of your education. What do you possibly know about yin and yang? Jane don't give a f about yin or yang, and he has Sparkman destroy Moki Moki. Uh? Not you! Uh-oh. And then Flame Wingman drop kicks Balowski right in the chest, causing him to fall backwards, because of course, as we all know, holograms can damage people, unless they can't. Balowski sits up and uses the effect of human wave tactics to summon Happy Lover, a thing that no Yu-Gi-Oh protagonist is familiar with. And since Happy Lover likes to share the love, I'll bring back his bud Moki Moki and attack Modi Modi. And speaking of bud, I'm sure that Balowski smoked several of those before starting this duel. Jaden's friend are once again fawning over the Moki Mokis, much to Jaden's frustration. Uh, he has such a calming presence. Moki Moki makes everything so chill. I feel fuzzy and warm. Yes, nothing says calming presence like a shrill, high-pitched voice coming out of a blob of tofu that has wings and is shrieking at you. The only way it could get more calming is if it had tentacles and it was slowly suffocating me with them. Crowler is highly amused by the way the duel is playing out, and then Balowski continues his turn. Next I play Moki Moki Smackdown. Moki Moki Smackdown? Huh? What? Moki Moki Smackdown. Then I think I'll attack your Sparkman with my happy lover. I too would be a happy lover if I got to attack Sparkman. <laughs> Jaden is confused as to why Balowski would send Happy Lover after Sparkman, since Sparkman's attack points are so much higher. But then Balowski commands Happy Lover to attack regardless. Gushy Burst! Gushy Burst? Ah, oh, that doesn't sound very PG. We can't have guns in our show, but we can say things like Gooshy Burst. Sparkman yeets the attack back at Happy Lover, and seeing Happy Lover die causes Moki Moki to go into an emotional rage, momentarily resembling Master Shake from Aqua Teen Hunger Force before turning bright red. All the while, of course, saying, Moki! 
for some reason, this makes Jaden's friends fall even more in love with the fucking thing. Even though any other rational person would be like, get that thing away from me right now. Alexis and Bastion discuss the most recent live stream of The Joy of Painting with Bob Ross. I could just watch him for days. Yeah, he's the best. Belowski explains that since Sparkman destroyed a fairy type monster, Moki Moki Smackdown activates, raising Moki Moki's attack to 3,000. And that raises Moki Moki's attack points to 3,000. Far out, huh? Power to the Moki Moki. No! No power to the Moki Moki! Cut off all power to the bloody Moki Moki! It's bloody annoying. Belowski commands his Moki Moki to attack Flame Wingman, and Moki Moki starts emitting strange pulses of energy that cause Flame Wingman to explode directly out of his thigh gap. Jaden's friends continue to drink the Kool-Aid straight out of Moki Moki. Moki Moki! What's with you guys? They're feeling the moke. Wasn't Moke the bad guy from the new Star Wars movies? In which case, stop feeling him. Belowski then activates Mystic Walk, which allows him to gain the same number of life points as the monster's attack points that he sacrifices. So he sacrifices Moki Moki. And then- uh? Not you! And then he uses the effect of human wave tactics to replace Happy Lover with Haniwa, who looks for all the world like the Commodore 64 character Dizzy after dealing with a lifetime of depression and neglect. Jaden is very upset by how this duel is playing out, but Bastion tries to calm him down. Hey Jaden! Huh? You gotta chill out, man. Holy sh! Did the Moki Mokis remove him of his poshness? His stiff upper lip has turned into a soft upper lip. The only equation that matters to him now is Moki plus Moki equals Moki Moki. Or Moki squared, you might say. Mmm, Moki. Jaden's friends continue to... encourage him. You're surrounded by this negative energy, dude. You can't bring that to a duel. What? Sing our mantra, man. Mantra? I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that most Yu-Gi-Oh shows would be improved if the entire main cast were stoners. Hey, Yulk, remember when Kaiba summoned his blue eyes? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Guys, Weevil threw my cards over the edge of the boat. What are we gonna do? <laughs> Oh, oh, <laughs> my grandpa's gonna die. <laughs> I'm no different. Actually, I do smoke marijuana. It's good stuff. You gotta chill out, man. Chumley does his best impression of me after I've taken one glimpse at Sparkman's booty. Crowler then flies down in his spacesuit using like a bloody jetpack, and he delivers this amazing line. <laughs> Brilliant. And Crowler says to Jaden, I see you've met one of my favorite students, Belowski. And he goes over and puts his creepy hands around Belowski. He's feeling the moke. And Crowler says he loves Belowski as long as he's safe from his powers. Powers? Is Duel Academy also known as Professor Crowler's School for the Gifted? To me, my X-Men! Crowler explains that Belowski is a very special duelist and he was left on the Duel Academy doorstep as a baby. What? Whoa, 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 what? No, what? Isn't Duel Academy's location meant to be like a big secret or something? Like a big clandestine military secret thing? Am I imagining that? Is that not a thing? Who came all the way to Duel Academy to drop a baby at the doorstep in the middle of the f***ing ocean? What, why? I have so many questions and zero of them are gonna be answered cause it's Yu-Gi-Oh! Apparently Bolowski quickly became a master duelist, rising through the- Who raised him? Did he suckle at Chancellor Shepard's teat? Is Pharaoh the cat his mum and or dad? Who did the- Who taught- What? <laughs> so many questions. Anyway, Crowler continues- it was then strange things began to occur. Oh, then strange things started to occur? Like it hasn't already been- happening with the baby being dropped off at the doorstep? I mean, 
<laughs> Jaden thinks that Crowler's referring to the way that Belowski talks, but then Crowler corrects him by saying that it's the way the monsters that he summons come alive. Wait, isn't that all the monsters in this show? Didn't we have an entire episode where a kid was summoning monsters and they were having romantic soliloquies? Crowler explains that Belowski's powers allow him to lull everyone around him into a deep sleep. Oh, so he's the Jigglypuff of Yu-Gi-Oh. It's cool, man. It's not like they're in any kind of danger or anything. Moki Moki just makes him feel nice and cozy. So does being asphyxiated. Crowler explains that Belowski's powers were so dangerous that it once lulled everyone in Duel Academy to sleep. And that's why they had to build a titanium sealed holographic chamber underground for Belowski to live in. Couldn't you just take away his trading cards? Wouldn't that be the simpler, less abusive solution? You raised this child and then you locked him in a dome. Jaden is deeply offended by what Crowler is saying. You mean a jail. Jail's such an ugly word. We prefer mandatory restraint habitat. You know, if Crowler loses his job as a card game professor, he'd probably do very well working for ICE. Crowler explains that it's not as bad as all that, as from the inside the dome appears to be like an island paradise. And then we see Belowski chilling out not with the crew in the schoolyard, but on a holographic island. Belowski says it's not as bad as all that, as Professor Crowler lets him out anytime he needs him to duel somebody, and when he's in there, he gets to hang out with his monster friends and chat with them. Plus, I get plenty of time to hang with my monster crew and spin our wheels and stuff. And dude, we have some deep talks too. We're totally unraveling the universe. Mate, most of your monsters only say the words Moki Moki. I highly doubt you're unraveling anything except my sanity. Jaden summons elemental hero Wildheart. Watch out, he might throw a boomerang at himself. Wildheart destroys Haniwa and Sparkman then attacks directly. And in a fun bit of continuity, Crowler legs it before he can get zapped once again by the electricity from Sparkman. Of course, this means that Belowski gets horrifically electric but what's a smidge more abuse, eh? Once again, holograms. They can hurt you. Unless they can't. Belowski calls Jaden a big party pooper and then brings out yet another happy lover using human wave tactics. Which sounds like a Metal Gear Solid spin-off game for the PSP. Crowler then realizes that Jaden hasn't been remotely affected by Belowski's powers. And Belowski is just as confused as Crowler, but infinitely more chill about it. Belowski uses pot of greed. And then he uses the card Dark Factory of Mass Production, which is ironically how they produce most Yu-Gi-Oh cards in real life. This card allows him to bring two monster cards back to his hand, and of course he brings back Moki Mokis. Huh? No. Uh -oh. And then he uses all his Moki Mokis to summon Moki Moki King, who is so enormous that he dwarfs the entire Duel Academy. I didn't even realize there was a Moki Moki monarchy. Jaden finally notices Sparkman's juice behind. Whoa, that's big. Moki Moki King says, of course. Moki Moki. Oh, so this is what it must have felt like to put up with people shouting card games on motorcycles all the time. Waves of intense energy begin emitting from Moki Moki King's body, and Jaden has Wildheart attack Moki Moki King, splitting it right down the middle and causing it to explodey blody. Belowski's life points drop down to 1300, and his Moki Moki King splits into three individual Moki Mokis. That's at least six Mokis. Belowski says, That was so totally awesome, man! But the circle of life must go on. How is this in any way representative of the circle of life? I don't remember that from Disney's The Moki Moki King. You know, if they added morning report to this episode, it would actually be an improvement. The three Moki Mokis then generate enough energy together to shatter Crowler's helmet and cause him to fall down. Again, holographic damage, it is a thing. Unless it ain't. And Belowski commands Happy Lover to attack Wildheart with... You guessed it. Gushy first! Oh! Should have seen that coming. Phrasing. Wildheart easily deflects the blast with his muscly, meaty man arms, and Happy Lover is burnt to a crisp by its own burst of goosh. This causes the three Moki Mokis to be pissed, raising their attack points to 3,000 and allowing Belowski to attack both Sparkman and Wildheart with two of them. But Jaden is quick to activate his trap card, Hero Barrier, and he explains that so long as he's got one elemental hero on the field, this trap card prevents one of his Moki Moki's attacks from working. But Belowski still has one Moki Moki up his sleeve. Moki 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 Moki
Yeah, that's a nopey nopey from me. Sparkman is destroyed and Jaden's life points drop to 200. Yes, he's on the ropey ropies. And with human wave tactics, Bolowski's able to bring back yet another happy lover which is more than I can say I've ever been able to do. And then Bolowski plays, in his own words, this way cool trap card, Gift of the Mystic Elf. You know, at the beginning of the episode, they were using like direct quotes from the big Lebowski to tie his character to that movie. But now they've just sort of degenerated into things like way cool, which is the sort of thing Jaden would say. So bit lazy. Gift of the Mystic Elf raises Bolowski's life points by 300 for every monster on the field. And Bolowski comments, You're not looking too hot. Do you want to take a burrito break or something? This of course gives Jaden the bright idea to summon elemental hero Burrito Man. Sorry, Bubble Man. Bolowski wonders aloud how Jaden can still keep going the way he is. And Jaden says it's because he never gives up, especially in a duel this much fun. Yeah, nothing quite says a fun duel quite like summoning the same monsters over and over again and having them shriek the same annoying catchphrase at you. And of course, your friends all doing it at the same time. So much fun. Jaden activates the spell card Hero Heart, which allows Bubble Man to attack twice if Jaden cuts his attack points in half. And so Bubble Man attacks one of the Moki Mokis with Bubble Blast, which is actually just a stream of water, so... That's a lie, big fat liar. Again, Bolowski's Moki Mokis get really angry and their attack points raise to 3000. This duel is just so much fun. Ah, I'm having a great time. Jaden still attacks regardless and activates the card Bubble Illusion, which features Bubble Man dressed as Job Bluth from Arrested Development. Sure, 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 sure. The guy with the 3000 attack points is gonna get attacked by the, the Bubble Man with the 800 attack points. Sure, come on. This card allows Jaden to play a trap card directly from his hand if Bubble Man is on the field. And Jaden activates his old chestnut Mirror Gate, causing all the monsters to switch sides. Now Bubble Man is attacking from Bolowski's side of the field, while Jaden has the Moki Moki with 3,000 attack points. Jaden commands, All right, give him a taste of his own Moki! Well, I suppose it's less gross than Gushy Burst. I feel like you could have done all of this without attacking first, but I, who am I to judge? I'm not the next King of Games, Jaden Yuki. This attack causes a massive explosion, and when we cut back, we see Bolowski fallen on the floor with his monsters disappearing in a puff of holographic magic. Bolowski's life points drop to zero, but instead of falling on his hands and knees like you're supposed to when you lose, he falls backwards onto his bum. No! Now you're disqualified from the duel that you've already lost. I hope you're happy. Bilowski asks Jaden why he didn't trance out. Well, it's because he didn't take enough damage and he hadn't filled his trance meter yet. Oh, sorry, that's a Final Fantasy IX thing. Jaden explains the reason that Bolowski's powers didn't affect him is because the more he dueled Bolowski, the more revved up he got because he loves dueling that much. So I guess that makes it canon that nobody else at Duel Academy loves dueling as much as Jaden, which seems Kind of unlikely given that it is a card game school. It seems way more likely to me that Jaden has smoked weed so much that he's built up a tolerance to it. Bolowski then says he needs to take a nap and he falls asleep and Jaden finds himself surrounded by sleeping duelists. And as he screams at them to wake up, the camera pans up and we see a bunch of Moki Mokis in the clouds. Moki in the sky with dual discs. And that's the Moki end of the Moki episode. What did you guys? Moki. Did you Moki the episode? Moki at me in the comments. Personally, I thought there just wasn't quite enough Moki in it. Could have done with about 10% more Moki, quite frankly. No, but for real, what the hell was that? He got dropped off at Duel Academy as a baby? That raises so many questions. Primarily, how old is Duel Academy? Because Bolowski, he must be like 12 to 15 years old, maybe a bit older. So that gives us some sort of time frame. Still, who raised the mother also, is anybody gonna rescue Bolowski from being imprisoned inside that dome? Or is it just okay because he likes it? Yeah, there's a few loose ends to tie up there. Come to Duel Academy. You'll either get lost or imprisoned. 
Them's your choices. As always, I want to give a whopping Moki Moki King-sized shout-out to all of our Patreon pledges. Thank you so much. We uh, recently got hit with a bit of YouTube demonetization. It has been fixed. We are now monetized, but we did lose quite a bit of income from the entire channel being completely demonetized. So thank you to each and every one of you. You guys, you're, you're lifesavers. I mean, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but you guys did make a difference for us. So thank you so much for your support in every way. We mean that. And I want to give another plug to my Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv slash versus, where I'll be streaming much more frequently on a weekly basis, and I'll be playing some Yu-Gi-Oh games as well. So please check me out there. Give me a follow if you can. Until next time, it's Moki Moki from me. Ah? Uh? Not you. Moki Moki! Moki 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 Moki. Moki Moki! 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 Oh, you're such a cute little fella. Do you want some peanuts? Don't! He's allergic! They'll kill me.